So Brooke, um, I thought I thought this was a meadow according to the History Channel. Yeah, it was a big open field that resembles the um, terrain of South Africa. That doesn't look like that. Oh no, it is. The History Channel knows what they do and they make productions. I, all I see is green, Brooke. I don't see any Sierra, Sahara Desert. Oh no, you're just mistaken. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Redout Productions. We are on a expedition today. Today is July 3rd, 2020, and it's the 266th anniversary of the Battle of Fort Necessity, one of the opening actions of the French and Indian War, which, if you're watching this, you either know your, your stuff very well or you're actually looking for some information. For those looking for information, we will enlighten you. The, these opening actions will cause the French and Indian War, a war between Great Britain and France and the native tribes of North America and ultimately would lay the groundwork for the American Revolution two decades later. Now where we are at right now, we are currently at this spot called Jumonville Glen. Now just down this trail we're going to head down to there's a rock outcropping where on May 28th, 1754, a young George Washington ambushed a French uh, expedition. They don't, we, it's up to debate. Uh, we believe that they were ambassadors coming out here to tell the British to leave Western Pennsylvania. Ultimately, shots were fired down here, and by the end of it, the French general was dead. And this was basically a the biggest international incident of the mid 18th century. So, we're gonna British shot short. first. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's head down. Come on. We're also going to avoid animals and other things. It is actually supposed to get up to 93 today, but right now in the trees, it's pretty nice actually. It only feels like it's up to 75 down in here. Are you going to put this song as a lead on this? I don't know. <laughs> oh, we got a marker here, Brooke. We got to look at it because by law we have to look at it. We're going to look at every marker today, Brooke. This marker was by the Westmoreland Fayette County branch of the Historical Societies of Pennsylvania. Wait, it says surprise killed wounded or captured the entire engagement what about that one guy that escaped back to fort duquesne to uh, we won't talk French about him you know that one guy who's that probably the single most important <laughs> frenchman in american history uh, we won't talk about uh, him yeah he um he escaped and pretty much set the stage for everything yeah. that was going to happen later on yeah so um yeah this marker's got to be taken down it's 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 not historically correct <laughs> Honestly, why did they camp down in the middle of this giant valley? <laughs> well, Brooke, I think that's to protect them from the wind and the rain. Considering that they're on the, I think the, they would be on the southeastern side of the uh, the glen, so. Yeah, except um, you can pretty much get surrounded on all sides and fire. Ah, uh, well, we won't talk about that, Brooke. See, they don't even need guns to defend this. All they'd have to do is roll rocks down on top of you. <laughs> Also, today is July 3rd, so it also means it's the 157th anniversary of Pickett's Charge at Gettysburg. Kind of interesting how Virginians got oofed twice on the same day in history. Alright folks, so we're now standing in the middle of the glen here. So we're down here in the glen. Provides great protection against the winds blowing toward the east. They probably would, uh, The French would have been camped in this vicinity uh, on the night of May 27th into May 28th. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was a French diplomatic mission. They were coming out of Fort Duquesne. They had gotten word that there was a group of Virginians representing the British Empire not far from here in a place called Great Meadows, now Farmington, Pennsylvania. They camped here. They're ready to go tell the uh, Virginians, hey, you guys got to leave. George Washington will decide instead to march and ambush these uh, French because he's under the impression that they're here for hostility reasons. And he's told that by his one native ally, the half king, better uh, his, uh, his real name, Tana Grissom. Now, on May 28th, early in the morning, Washington's men are going to come up here on the cliffs. Washington is going to lead a detachment of men down into this open clearing uh, off to the left of the camera. 
French have no idea what's going to happen, and accounts really vary at this point of what follows. The French are going to report that the British opened fire without warning. The, Fr the British are going to report that somebody down here spotted the British and have raised an alarm, and the British only fired in self-defense. Whatever the cause is, in the following 15-minute skirmish, there are going to be about 10 French killed. The rest are going to be wounded or captured. Some of the French are going to try to escape up for this outcrop in here. As they escape, Hannah Griston is going to come down with his Native Americans and cut the escape off. Now, what happens next is probably the single most controversial thing that occurred in the 18th century. <laughs> We're talking about the Benghazi of, <laughs> of the 1750s here, folks. What follows is that Washington is trying to get, uh, the, get translated uh, the terms from the general, General Juman V. Juman V is wounded in the skirmish. He's laying here. He can't speak English. Washington can't speak French. They're trying to translate to each other what's going on. And in the middle of it, at least what most reports claim, Tana Grissom steps in in front of Juman V, takes out a tomahawk, cracks it over the skull of Juman V, and proceeds to wash his hands in the brains of the slain French general. This was in response to la a couple months before the French had established a fort down at the point of what is now the city of Pittsburgh, their fort called Fort Duquesne. Half King Tanagristan had aligned himself with the British, hoping to gain more power in the region. If the British had built that fort there, he would have had, he would been probably the most powerful native leader in his region. That was now not the case, so this was his act of revenge. And he knew the blame would fall on the young uh, Lieutenant Colonel George Washington. Now, one French soldier did manage to escape uh, the battle and the resulting massacre that occurred here afterwards. History does not know his name, and it's quite impressive to think how he probably ran, because you have to imagine, Tana Grissom cut that way off, Washington had cut this way off, and you have the Virginians on the cliffs over here, so you had to probably run somewhere down this way and make a large loop around the glen and make the 40-50 mile trek back to Fort Duquesne. And if that, if that French soldier had not escaped, there probably would never have been a French and Indian War, and it probably would never have been a American Revolution in the United States today. It's kind of interesting to point out. So that unsung French began to ran away. Uh, you could somewhat thank him for sending the path toward our how our history went. A volley fired by a young Virginia in the backwoods of America set the world on fire. So if you're looking to take a drive out here, come visit Jumonville Glen. It's at the top of the mountain. You have to make a left or right, depending on which way you're going on US 40. There's a sign at the very top of the mountain, National Park Service crest. You're gonna head a couple miles down Jumonville Road. It'll be off to your right-hand side. Parking lot's available. Uh, there's no real facilities here. This is a separate unit of Fort Necessity National Battlefield. So I highly recommend checking out the visitor center at the battlefield before you come out to visit here. Get any extra prior knowledge and to see if it's open or not. It's only open seasonally throughout the summer. Thank you for watching this video of doing our random tours here for Readout Productions. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, support the channel. Uh, other videos you can check out, we have a tour of the battlefield of Braddock's Defeat, which is given by uh, the tour guide at Braddock Battlefield at History Center, Matt Galt. We also have some other tours. We actually talk about the last battle for Pittsburgh, and it's not the battle you would think. Thank you guys for watching.